Hi my friends, how are you? I hope everybody is fine. My name is Daniel Villarino. Welcome to my YouTube channel. From the comments I received in the previous video, it seemed to me that it generated a lot of enthusiasm regarding the method of turning using the shadow as a reference. I would like to do some videos for a sphere turning and I would like to use the, this method of the shadow for one of those videos. However, in the past video, we saw that there was a slight problem when using the shadow and it was that the dimension of the projected shadow over the platform where the template was placed was larger than the actual dimension of the real object that we were turning, which in that video was a trompo. I have been studying and researching this a little and I searched the internet and I was a bit surprised to find that there is no much material regarding this technique. However, I found a pretty good article by David Reed Smith with corresponding video and a follow-up made by Doc Green with another article from which I will put the links in the video description below. I have decided then to do this video, which is not a good turning video, but an explicative one, explaining the reason for the distortion and a couple of methods for correction, or at least decrease the, of the effect. Let's say that we want to turn a sphere of approximately 2 inches in diameter. If the template that we are using for the method of turning with a shadow is of 2 inches, the sphere that we will obtain will have a smaller diameter. This may not be a problem if the measures are not important, but can give us a headache if we really need for the measure of the diameter to be 2 inches. I have developed in PowerPoint a presentation that shows the geometrical and mathematical analysis of the distortion and how to solve it. Being an engineer, I found this topic fascinating, but I know there will be many boot turners that may not be interested in this. So I will put there below the formula to correct the distortion and the timestamp of the video where you have to jump if you want to see another correction method that does not require so much calculation. You can pause this video and take note, but the basic formula consists on measuring the distance from the light source to the platform where the shadow will be projected and let's name that distance LS and we are going to measure also the distance between the light and the good turning axis for which we can use the life center to help us and to that distance we will call LE. We will divide LS by LE and the result will be the correction factor. If we multiply this correction factor by the diameter of the sphere that we want to turn, the result will be the diameter of the circumference that we need to trace to use as a template on the platform. Now that I have spoiled the end, let's begin the more technical explanation that you can skip if it comes to boring. In the slide, that appears to the right, I have drawn the source of light, also a spur center on the headstock and a life center on the tailstock. I have also drawn uh, below the platform and in another video I will show you how to construct it, over which we will project the shadow of the objects. Tracing a line from the spur center point shadow to the life center point shadow we will have on the platform the projection of the good turning axis that we will use as a reference after centering there the silhouettes of the objects to turn. If the line was already drawn, we just have to position the platform in such a way that the points of the spur center and the life center shadows fall on that line. In this slide, I have in red an already turned sphere and we can see over the platform the shadow of that sphere. For the effect of this demonstration, I have exaggerated substantially the dimensions of the distortion so that it can be noticed well, but typically the source of light will be farther up and the difference between the shadow and the actual sphere diameters will not be as large. 
For more clarity, in this slide I have removed the sports center and the life center and I am going to trace beams of light that will pass tangent to the sphere and project its shadow over the platform. Here you can appreciate that the diameter of the sphere is DE and the diameter of the projected shadow is DS. I would like to do a small parenthesis, a technical one, to explain uh, an issue that can be a little bit confusing. I am going to magnify the size of the sphere to check from a closer point the beams of light projecting the shadow. The beam of light that projects the shadow is not touching the sphere exactly in its center, but a little above that point, where the beam is tangent to the sphere. The distance between the two opposing tangent beams is dt, and that distance is a bit smaller than the actual diameter of the sphere, dE. In this case, largely exaggerated that we see in the slide, I have taken some measurements and the error is about 2.5%. Another error derived from this issue is that actually we should not measure the distance from the light to the wood turning axis, but to, to, to the intersection plane where the beams are touching the sphere. Both errors should be minimal in most practical cases, since the farther up the light is located from the object to be turned, the smaller is the effect of these errors. And in the slides I am showing, the closeness is really exaggerated. Ok, here we can close this technical parenthesis and proceed. In the slide we can see that we measure the distance between the light source and the good turning axis and we name the distance LE. Let's move it to the side so it does not bother in the other measurements. Now we measure the distance from the light source and the platform where the shadow will be projected and we call this distance LS, and let's also move it to the side. The intercept theorem, also known as the Thales Basic Proportionality Theorem, says that the ratio between the longest distance and the shortest distance is the same as the ratio between the shadow diameter, which is the largest, and the sphere diameter, which is the smallest. To the ratio of LS divided by LE, we can give the name of correction factor, Fc. And if we multiply the diameter of the sphere that we want to turn by the correction factor, we get the diameter of the circumference that we need as a template to turn the sphere we want. In other words, we get ds. In the example that I present here, I assume that the distance to the platform is 10, maybe inches, centimeters, etc. The distance to the lathe axis is 8 and that will give us a correction factor of 1.25 and from there, if we multiply that factor by the sphere diameter, which in this case is 2, we have the diameter of the template of the circumference of 2.5. Once again, in this example, I just made up all the measurements and they were greatly exaggerated. So each of you will have to get the adequate measures and calculate the correction factor for each case. An interesting thing is that once you have made all the measurements, if the distances do not change, the correction factor does not change either, and you can keep using it in other projects. Now, if you modify the height of the platform, or reposition the light closer or farther away, the measurements will change and so it will the correction factor. Now I would like to talk a little about the second method for doing the correction. This is a way to achieve the desired sphere without having to worry too much about taking so many measurements and making so many computations. Let's put a piece of wood in the lathe and turn a cylinder which diameter will be the diameter of the sphere that we want. For example, if we want a sphere of 2 inches, let's turn a cylinder with a diameter of 2 inches and for that we can simply use the caliper. 
In this slide, I rotated the perspective to see better the cylinder diameter, but I left the spool center and the life center as reference. Here you can see that the distance C in the slide refers to the cylinder diameter. This cylinder will project a shadow over the platform that will look like a rectangle. If we measure the shadow width perpendicular to the axis projection, and in this slide that measurement is called S, that distance is, for all practical purposes, the diameter of the circumference that we need to trace to use as a template. Alright, in the next videos that will follow, I will try to build a more sturdy platform for the shadow proje projection. I am going to make two cap jump chuck centers for turning spheres and similar objects. I am going to turn spheres using the shadow method with chuck and between centers and using the correction factor and the second method. I will also use those same uh, cap jump chucks uh, for turning spheres with a method that does not use the shadow and that I will explain at that time. So this is all for the moment. I hope you enjoyed this video. If that's the case, please remember to mark the like button down below, make comments, and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. And it will be until the next time. Cheers.